Okay. Um, so, yes. And do I have the ability to share? So, I assume I do. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to um, Red Hat OpenShift, um, OpenShift Commons Edge SIG. Uh, today, I, I was just going to um, go over uh, a, a poster, a review of a poster, and I consider it to be a mix of agriculture edge and um, industrial edge and, and see how um, best ways to break it down and into a roadmap for the SIG and generate a paper. I think that would be a good accomplishment. You know, we got one poster out there. Um, there's another one that, that has been approved for um, for July, you know, for the end of June. And the purpose of these posters is to, you know, it's, it's almost like um, advertising what we're doing and getting new audiences into, into open source so that they can um, begin to grow and understand this critical um, need and the critical need for the, for the things on the edge. So um, are there any questions? Okay, well, let me share my screen and, and Okay, so you can see my see my screen now. So that, and and here and here's pretty much what we'll go through, uh, review of what we go through. So now I'm going to talk about that, um, at the agro this um, aquaquatics culture as it makes agriculture edge and industrial edge. And then we know that in the past we looked at home labs and things of that nature, and we talked to um, Mr. Daniel Finnehart. Last week, and he gave us a, a live demo of GitOps with MicroShare, and 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 we asked him a question: Well, how does how does he test, and how does he um, get his work done? And he said he uses VM, and so using a, a mixture of, of our past speakers, um, some of the things that are you know being recently announced on the edge, uh, for example, the SNO, um, I believe it was recently announced that containers and VMs can be done simultaneously on the single node um, OpenShift now. And I, I think that's a very big deal for the edge. And we can try to uh, talk about that later. And then there was an actual course um, listed on there. And then, you know, uh, uh, anytime you talk about containers and security, you get to the things of confidential containers. And, and the whole point of us talking about all this is so that we can begin to lay ourselves down in the, in, into the opportunities of research on the edge that can lead us to a paper. And sometimes in, in, when you're doing research um, on papers, they, they can lead to funding opportunities. And who knows, this could be a funding opportunity and a, contrib and a contribution to Fed Fedoraville. Um, does everyone know what Fedoraville is? Okay, so, and, and so the, the, this is, you know, ultimately what we're trying to do. So now let me share uh, is a, a poster. Somebody has way too many icons on their iPad. <laughs> but that's my little girl taking it over. <laughs> taking over my iPad and just, ah, uh, you know. That is, if if you're trying to show it off, <laughs> I can do it on my computer if you like. Oh, I, I just I just found, oh, um, it doesn't matter, Ben. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I just didn't know if you're having trouble finding it. Okay. So this was um, recently uh, presented um, this week. Um, by our, by our team and with some of uh, my clients, um, the Seed Institute and the Greenleaf Foundation. And basically, you know, um, you know, it's just representing a use case for the edge with cybersecurity and federated learning. And I assume everyone knows what federated learning is. So the most simplest uh, concept of federated learning is, hey, it's pretty much like going to the library. Everyone has access to the library and the books are there for everyone to learn from. And now in the digital age, 
there, there are problems in which the world is trying to solve and it's such a scale that we have to work together and make um, and make intelligent decisions together. Um, climate change, food security, uh, our in our entire economy. And so this is and so this is um, one of the justifications that I'm using to say that hey, the edge is going to play a big role both in the cybersecurity and the federated learning. Um, one of the reasons why I say hey, this is a mixed case between the agriculture edge and the industrial edge. The industrial edge is always hey, we're trying to make a product and we're trying to um, optimize the efficiency for this product and we're trying to put in tools that are, are cost effective and get the production of that product out um, through a supply chain as, as effectively as we can. And, and then the agriculture edge is pretty much the food is the product and you're, you're also trying to create some type of resilience um, to overcome any other challenges. So at a high level, um, when we look at this thing for, um, for the aquaculture or seafood use case, these are the things we're, we're looking at. And right now we live in a world in which, hey, we're having a lot of cybersecurity issues. Uh, we're having hacking everywhere. Um, if you go here and just look at 224, hacking issues and, and, the, and the water grid and healthcare, School systems and universities are being hacked. Financial services are being hacked. And hey, there's some there's some compliance that the public sector is having to do with zero trust um, 2.0 policy just came out. And so those are all things we, we have to be able to do, especially if we have any customers trying to solve any solutions that are in the interest of, of the public good. So what what we are doing and at the highest level is that um, the, the, the quintessential question that we're trying to answer um, in, in this potential funding opportunity was, um, if, you, if you see here, what are the four goals? One, get decision-making researchers and, and next, to get a community into open source, basically. Um, and they have to understand the power of the edge. Um, insight monthly system training, um, the, the open cloud. Um, David, are you familiar with open cloud? I believe I am. Okay. okay. So that's a that's an effort by Boston University um, to to provide a new type of um, public cloud. And so and so I'm saying, hey, this could be a, a case of that where some innovation on the edge could occur. And then uh, we have IBM. They're getting ready to put out $45 million for climate resistance, uh, an RFP for climate resistance for climate adaptation and um, for resilient cities. And so the whole gist of, of this hangs off of the notion that you can't have smart cities without having smart um, agriculture or, or smart food systems. And so that's what we're trying to do to make the cities more sustainable. So does that make sense to everyone? It's a piece of the puzzle, but it's not the entire piece, doctor. Um, yeah. A lot of the, um, a lot of the, yeah. you know, from a smart city standpoint, um, there's a lot more stuff than just uh, either agriculture, food stuff, et cetera, because that, um, it, it's, I mean, there's a lot more stuff than that. And myself and Ben Cohn have been chatting back and forth, not necessarily in this call, but other calls of, you know, it's everything. I mean, there's food, there's water, there's public safety, there's, um, energy, you know, the power grid, um, there's a whole plethora of stuff from that standpoint. So understanding that it's, you know, it literally takes a village to do mm -hmm. um, what we're what we're trying to do. You know, I wouldn't you know push it from you know, from aquatics just from an aquatic standpoint. It's it's you know a lot more wider spread than that. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, I I agree. But uh, I'm just trying to pull out my pieces. You know, um, and, and wouldn't you agree that in order for all those pieces to work together, they're going to have to share data, right?
Would you say that that's a good assumption? Well, depends on the data that's being shared. Um, the aquaculture is not going to be shared data from, let's say, public safety emergency management, um, nor will public safety emergency management. Oh, oh, okay. And that might be the case because um, they're do two different, um, how do you call it, environments or themes? Different areas. Different areas. Different areas. So you're looking at, yeah, granted, I mean, I get with, you know, what you're sort of trying to do, but it's, I don't say it's apples and oranges per se. It's more mm -hmm. of, yeah, it may feed off each area, may complement each other, et cetera, but it's, you know, a little different. Okay. Yes, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. But they do have a relationship to each other. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. Right. Because the question um, how's the relationship? What's the relationship then? Well, so, so if you look down here in, in my three areas, my three mm -hmm. major edge utilizations, fish waste management, water desalinization, and, and the operational report. And I'm saying here, there, there can be some critical needs that affect all of us. If, if you look up here to some of the reasons why I say you need to do federated learning is that it can help us create trust among all these different agencies, the fishermen, the government, the data is reproducible, and the data has a data provenance if everyone believes it. And, and, and then you see that the one line below the PFAs, are you familiar with the term PFAs? PSA, oh, um, not PSA. real, right off the top of my basically, head. Yeah, basically it's just plastics. And the plastics are everywhere. They're right. in our environment, they're in our food, and some say they're in our genes. And, and some would say it's a public safety emergency. So do you see how the, the level of plastics in your food could be a serious health hazard? And so that's why, but, and if you don't have that information, I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't you like to know that if that's in your food? Perhaps. Oh, well, but again, well, and, but it, but it, but like I said, it, how does this, um, how do I call it? How does this, for lack of a better term, um, maybe I'm, you know, maybe getting too much in the weeds, so to speak, in this in this side. But how does plastics in my food equate to cops on the street? Uh, what was your last statement? You said cops on the how street. Did, yeah, police on the street, or you know, fire fire departments, firefighting. Oh, oh, I'm, I guess I'm relating it more to health, a healthcare issue, right? And people getting mm -hmm. sick. Mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, if a lot of people become sick, it could be a slow emergency that, that can become catastrophic. Is what That's I'm, not is what the I'm thing about it. Yeah, but, you know, but um, it's not in here. Say that again? It's not in here as far as what you're trying to equate. There's, you know, from being a... a you know, health hazard, so to speak. It's not in here. Oh, but, but, but see, that comes from people sharing the data. Um, plastics is, is not in any healthcare system or shared with anyone at this present time. I mean, plastics exist at the bottom of the oceans right now, but fishermen have never had, had been challenged to say, well, what's, what's the part per million uh, that's going into the fish? No one's challenged that. And, and so that's a problem in and of itself. Wouldn't you agree? Possibly. Um, if you look at water desalinization, water desalinization, every almost every city, whether you're in a the civil civilized um, in the industrialized parts of the world or in the developing nations of the world, because the plastics are everywhere, now you have to uh, clean the water at such a level that you try to get even the plastic particulates out of the water. So that could be a higher cost. I mean, I mean, we're using the word smart technology. How smart is it if things are going on and, and, are, and are just exacerbating our, our human health? It's not smart technology then, is it? And so that, that's where I'm arguing. If you can pull the data in, then the system 
with AI, hey, we got all these people spending all this money in the AI. The system should be able to say, hey, um, we, we have these sensors, all of these sensors, the um, IoT, um, Internet of Things, billions of sensors out there going to be putting it in through Costa. And, and at some point, they, they're going to try to make a decision. The food is good or not good. Hey, there was an oil spill. What do we do? Do we not eat food from this area this day? And, and so I'm trying to pull out those use cases which could improve, um, you know, the human, human life. Does, does that make sense? It does, but there's you know a little different. How do I how do I explain this? Okay. Um, and and, and David, this is this is just a debate. Neither one of us has to be right or wrong. We're just sharing our opinions. That's all. You know. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate I know, all your comments. I'm not saying you know right or wrong either. I'm just I'm looking at it from a standpoint of. Um, if you were to um, take this document information that you've created and present it to somebody here, and I, I'm looking at this going, okay, you know, and, you know, how does this affect what you're talking about here? I mean, from, you know, I, I get the plastics, I get, you know, water desalinization, I get the, you know, fish waste management. I get all that type of stuff, but how does what you're presenting here affect me? I mean, it, it sounds like, it looks like it's, you know, to me, you know, I mean, I could be wrong, Ben and Vlad, you know, you know, please mm -hmm. chime in. How does this affect, you know, it affect, well, the salvation affects people on the coast. It doesn't affect people internal to the, you know, in, inside the, you know, whether it be U.S. or, or, anybody you know europe or something to that nature where your internal fish waste management i can see because maybe that's a a stare a part of somebody's diet okay. not necessarily okay. all of it um and then yeah. and then you go you know your third part i can't see the third part oh because uh, it's operational it's, report oper operational reporting well that's okay i, I get operational reporting because you, you gotta op you gotta report what you find and you gotta you know Put all the metrics together you have to you know report out to what you you know what you find etc so it's kind of um in my you know from my standpoint and i'm just looking for mm -hmm. mine is like you know it's i don't say it's too finite but it's a little um it doesn't 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 cut a bigger swath of individuals because your fish management let's say I, you know i get my fish you know i go to a pond and i fish in a pond mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. or or dnr you know department of natural resources and we don't even touch plastics in the water we don't touch water desalination we don't touch any of that type of stuff because we have stuff local to where we're at Okay. And yeah, that type yeah. of thing, and that's and that's what I'm getting at is it doesn't, you know, you're looking from a from a sea ocean standpoint. A coast, you're saying I'm only limited to the coast, coastal right. regions, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and so what what I'm saying is that the plastics have been documented by scientists to affect caves deep underground. <laughs> it, it's all over the the earth. The whole earth has some layer of plastics everywhere. And it's to the point that a lot of the seafood farming, a lot of the fish are dying. And guess what? The next so 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 when we look at the the big the big picture of this, there are two major use cases. The first major use case is fish farming, and that's done um, not on the coast, but in lakes and ponds, sometimes man-made, and that could be anywhere the climate can support it. And then that's a, a huge industry. And that's uh, um, done as a redundancy for when the seafood is too, too contaminated to eat so that, so that um, people don't go hungry. So you see how these dynamic systems work together?
I do get I, I do understand. Don't get me wrong. I understand it. It's just yeah. I mean, it's a lot to think about. It, it really is. But all you need is one or two catastrophes. And um, down in Florida last year, we had a um, the algae bloom. The, the oceans are are the temperatures are very high, and they had a big fish kill. Two or three fish kills in the oceans. Then you got to get food from somewhere else, and then you you don't have a choice sometimes with, with if the fish kill is too big. And so it, it's good to know about these things, right? Because once you, you we are what we eat, right? Right. So so that that's all I'm trying to say. And, but but that's that's a great point though. I mean, a lot of people who are inland, um, they they may not even think about the plastics contaminating them, but yeah, they, right now there are studies showing that the plastics are, are even happening in, in the cellular transformation in, 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 in the human organ, in the hu human organism. And that's how contaminated the whole earth is. And it's, it's just, it's becoming a crisis. The only country that has some, some grass from it is Sweden. Because they have, they can afford to decontaminate their environment at the molecular level. Everyone else is, no one's done anything, and so, um, and so that that's a, a, a very big um, issue going forward. Maybe not for us, but definitely for the ch generation that comes after us. You know, and if we are going to say we have this AI, we have a smart technology, and we our children without the capability to, to decide to have a, some type of influence on their health, then it's not really smart technology, right? And, and, that, and that's what I'm, what I'm trying to address. Um, here, um, back in 2009, IBM, led by John Kelly, spent, they spent some resources on, on something um, like late informatics. And they, they weren't at the coast, but they were in a lake and they were trying to optimize some things. And, and, and so they, they were, it, I think Lake George is in New York. And what happened was it snows there. And somehow the, um, you know, when it snows, they put salt down to decontaminate the roads. And some of the salt ran off into the lake and was killing fish. It's a threat to food, food supply. So you got an ocean contaminated, you're killing your fish inland, and you got a lot of hungry people. And so we, we're just trying to put together a system that maybe can um, deal with some of the multivariance of food security, both inland and on the coast. And because, you know, the water desalinization is, is, is bad enough. If you look in, at just the freshwater fish um, use case, and, and guys, I never meant to become a fisherman, but <laughs> to helping my clients, they, they've been educating me. But when the fish are in the, the ponds growing, you have two things to worry about. You want to feed them so they don't die, but then you have to decontaminate the water that they're living in such that the waste doesn't build up to where it becomes toxic, that it kills it. And then, <laughs> I mean, so th that's, that's one um, fish waste thing. On the coast, you have a completely different um, circumstances because a lot of agricultural um, things um, from, from all of the farms run out into the ocean and they create this condition called hydroproxy which means there's no, there's no oxygen in the water that the fertilizer puts out. And again, you have another thing of fish kits. And then on top of the plastics, the plastics which are laying on the sea floor, um, they say the layers are building up. No, no country has said, put forth a, a, a means on how to clean up the sea floor of plastics out there. Um, and so it, it, it's only, I mean, we say we create a smart system. If we create smart systems, then they should at least have the data. And, now, and what I am saying is, hey, let's get the data in there so we can make some decisions that are that can be automated for all of for all of us. 
and, and because right now it's not done in any, in any manner. Um, and, and so, um, and, and so, in, in doing that, I'm saying, in it, additionally, the open cloud could be a solution where it can act as a, a, a federated learning hub, where a lot of this data comes in and and is in a, a data lake and is structured such that decisions can be made such that you can have some type of intelligence that could benefit people on the coast or, or wherever they are. And, um, you know, really, one thing, we, we, if we can make it even simpler, is just talking about the data provenance of food. When you go to the store, do you know where it comes from? When you, when you pay your money for your food, do you have an idea where it comes from? We don't even do that. I do. But we're talking about exactly the smart city. Huh? I know exactly where it comes from. Okay. And so when you say you know where it comes from, do you know what type of chemicals it was grown with? What type of pesticides? What type of soil it was grown in? Yeah, but you're going way further down than way further down. Yeah, but but there should still be um, some record of it, right? Because you are ingesting it into your body, and then what happens later on as we get older, we get these things called cancer and other diseases and stuff. And, and we say we don't know how it came about. Just, you know? uh, just in case this didn't make it through, is the role of EDGE here um monitoring uh certain statistics in place in different places is that the idea that it's distributed sensors i, I would say moving it into a, a data lake or data um data lake house where you can do that and you can say hey it, it hits a, cer a certain threshold and that's making an intelligent decision about the, the things um yeah, I think it'll be hard. it I might guess, be hard to do that. Yes, huh? It might. It was probably easy to easier to get a high level picture, but if you're you know trying to track an individual fish, you know from where it's raised to where it's eaten, that that's that's hard. Um, but, but you might be able to get some high level pictures. Right? Hmm? A fishing habitat should be reasonable, right? I, uh, I, I don't know unless it's serialized how, how how you could do it, you know. Um, we have the organizations, you know, um, USDA and NOAA. That's their job to know what you know the the health of the of our oceans and lakes and, and stuff. That's why we pay them our, our money, you know. Um, it, because as soon as there's an outbreak that affects us. They have to have that, that type of data problem. I mean, that's their charge. Yeah. So then I guess just going back to the edge part, is the edge part gathering data and then you, you uploading it to some sort of central repository or something? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's what I'm that's what okay. I'm trying to so and, and I'm calling any decisions made from that the that data intelligence all the smart. You know, so that we can react and and not just be ten years later. You know, <laughs> some trend. Um, and, and and I think it's also very similar to what Miss is just talking about, where they need help with their NBD, their vulnerability database. Um, the edge. I mean, it's pretty much the same situation. All this, all these attacks happening on, on the edge, and no data is coming in or. It's coming in and, and maybe their system is maybe too monolithic, you know? Because, um, you know, they're responsible now, you know, so they don't have to change the whole way they way they do stuff to keep up with. And, and I think there's been a new limit put on cyber attack now. I forget, you know, people are supposed to report the, the attacks and, and, and things of that nature, but, you know, the same thing with the outbreak or a threshold that could adversely affect human life. Is, is is what I'm saying. That's you know just just as much as important. 
So does so does that make sense? Is it digestible? And, and then is how can we use this to, to to show that this is a need that is not being dealt with and help a new population of people come into open source? You know? And and, and then that's where I was going down um, with the training. Hey, you know, you can go and, and help build this system. Um, you can help your local fishermen, you can um, help people um, put put forth some type of com community system to bring the data in and know that it's coming in so such that I, I would think the next generation would be very interested in the health of their food. I mean, does, does this, is this making sense or is it too, um, what is it, grandiose, the word? I guess the thing from my standpoint, doctor, is that, yeah, you know, I mean, I get the understanding of way fish management, you know, the, the goal that you're looking for, the three, three use cases. But what I'm getting at, you know, from, you know, is clear, you know, from what a clarification of how open source and OpenShift AI, um, all these different technologies that you're look that you've spelled out here, how exactly does that, um assist or resolve or what you know et cetera et cetera these use cases um so, i i look at you know because I'm, I'm i'm listening to what you're hearing don't get me wrong i'm mm -hmm. listening to what you're hearing but um it's i i i'm i'm having a hard time connecting the dots okay so, as a so word what to, to understand to understand all this. So what I want to suggest in this in red is that we could come up with an automated policy maturation management and enforcement with rollback. Basically, that means whenever the, the data in the data repository says, hey, these fish are dying or they're toxic, do not eat them. And policy could be automated because these smart, te smart technologies should have that ability. Should have that capability because you don't have time to have it amongst the politicians. Um, and, and so that's that's what, that's basically what I'm saying. If the if a threshold is reached where it becomes adverse to human life and it's clear, you know, um, I mean right now we um, I think in the in the dairy industry you have bird food. Um, Cows are getting bird flu. I'm, I'm sure none of us want, of us wants to eat those cows. I won't expect to be in our food supply chain. And so the 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 data repository should be hooked into our politics, where policy is is in place because policy is what dictates an awareness for people um, on what they should should or should not be doing concerning their health. And so I'm saying, hey. We should have some automated policy that lets us know this. Because right now you don't know. How do you know when something um, happens that could cause harm to you? I mean, I, I don't know of any formal system. I mean, it, it's basically void in terms of policy that, that, that comes back. We have all this data and we're not using it. I mean, did I, did I, uh, did, did that, did that fit? Say, hey, the policy should be automated. I mean, we're going to have, we're talking about we want um, cars that can drive around, drive up and down the street um, and make decisions for us. Well, why shouldn't policies be able to do that concerning our health? Because there's a lot of, a lot of people in, in, involved in, in stuff like this. NOAA, mm -hmm. USDA, Food and Drug, um, Fish and Wildlife, or, you know, um, DUI, Fish and Wildlife, doesn't necessarily mean, you know, DNR, you know, Department of Natural Resources, 
you know, you have all these different agencies that have to come into play, you know, kind of come together and say, hey, we need to be able to do have a single reporting mechanism or however you want to, you know, however you want to, you know, word that mm -hmm. in order to do everything, you know, to do what you were saying because it, you know, it doesn't, it looks at it from a standpoint of, yeah, you may have one person do one thing, another person do another thing, and another person do another thing, and you're not necessarily getting that all that information into your data lake, into your um, and into your your system, so that you can make um, decisions based on that information, good and solid um, life safety decisions. And so it's kind of you know it's it sounds good. But, it, yeah, the, and I think that's what it sounds good. It sounds like how things should work. But we know in reality the politics can be quite messy. <laughs> you know? But we but if AI is gonna take over, what else is it going to do? It, it's gonna have to do it. I mean I mean that's what they're spending uh, two billion dollars on saying AI can do this and do that. Well, if, if human beings aren't sharing data and working together, how is AI going to work together? And the other, th the other point that I want to throw out there is you got to have something that impacts everybody, not just one um, group or one type of individual. Mm -hmm. you, you know, something that you're going to have to, you know, impacts everybody, whether it be, you know, people who are in, you know, let's say Midwest United States or in, you know, how does, okay, how does what you're talking about, water desalinization, fish waste, fish waste management affect somebody like in, um, we'll say, Central Europe, um, Switzerland, or Austria, or somebody who's not even close to the to the um, um, to the water's edge of the ocean. How does that work? I mean, what benefit would they see by putting using these use cases for someplace like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my thing is, um, it's all about having some type of food redundancy or that's why it makes uh, smart cities gives them a little bit of resilience such that if one known source of food goes down you have something else and so that's why I talk about the the wild caught um, use case in the ocean and then the fresh farming which everything is being farmed um, in, in lakes now crawdad, shrimp all different types of fish and and one is, is done in case the other one fails. And if both of them fail, then we have a real problem. <laughs> because people are hungry, you know? Did I answer? Did, did, I mean, was, it, was that what you're looking for? I mean, I'm saying it, it's just a matter of redundancy. Well, I mean, I... You know, I look at it, you know, you're saying fish and it's one part part of the, you know, mm -hmm. it's one part of the, how would you call it, the, you know, the, the e graph. If you will. I mean, you, food chain. Yes. You know, food chain. I mean, you've got other side, types of food. You've got, you know, you know, I hate to use the word vegan. If you want to use vegan type stuff, you have that. You have mm -hmm. um, beef, you have pork, you have um, all these other types of food versus just, you know, other than the fish. Mm -hmm. and, and so they, they could be added in too, the equation too, correct? But it's like that, that's that's the question I'm having is, you know, how does what you're proposing and what you're, you know, you're saying here affect more yeah, than so one I'm, I'm, type I'm of building, person? I'm building um, smart decision making for fish, but the same things could be applied to those as well. Remember, I talked about. Um, the dairy cows just getting mm -hmm. uh, avian flu. That means they're having a problem sustaining. Farmers in Texas are suffering from that right now. Um, at, at what point? You know, God forbid, 
this thing ever happens, right? That the food chains, all you need is two or three systems to get stressed and, you know, but, but that's what people are too sick. Maybe this is the real question. Do we believe in climate change or do we not believe in climate change? Maybe that's a, the even bigger question, you know, because the oceans are warmer. I mean, we've never had um, bird flu in cattle before. <laughs> I mean, and, and some of these things are unpredictable, you know? And so um, the, the smart technology is trying its best to, to keep you from dealing with these unknowns. I mean, I would think that would be what the whole goal of this. And, but that's a, a value-added selling point for edge computing. If, if well, that be the case, then uh -huh. that be the case, then we need to be able to we need to take out the water desalization and food, you know, fish waste management and actually go broader than just mm -hmm. one p one one single piece. You know, from that standpoint, think... because because if mm -hmm. you go on, you know, you, like I keep saying, if you look at it, you know, if I look at your thing right now, and I'm not like I said, I'm just you know seeing what I'm showing what I'm seeing. If I look at your thing right now, mm -hmm. of of all you know all the you know the thing you, you know this, the sheet you, you sent out you know it doesn't impact as it's written it doesn't impact more than just a certain group of people whereas mm -hmm. if you expanded it if you can expand it to other foodstuffs whether it be you know beef poultry um, pork um vegan or, or plants instead of just you know focusing on fish i think it would work a little bit better because then you have a bigger swath of individuals that mm -hmm. would affect affect it more than just you know one type of pe or one you know one group of people or one group of foodstuffs mm -hmm. okay fair enough fair enough because because otherwise you look at this from you know my perspective i'm not i, I don't fit i'm not a fish guy so I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go fishing, but I'm, you know, it's more of a catch and release type thing. So when you looked mm -hmm. at that, I'm like, oh, and I, I, I see what you're trying to do, but it doesn't resonate with me. Just mm -hmm. water size, water size, the size of the nation. You know, I don't, you know, live by the ocean. I don't have salt water. I have fresh water. So how does that impact me? How does it impact, you know, folks who don't have that cap or don't have that issue? Okay. That's what, I mean, that's that, what I'm that's getting at. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah that's, that's fair enough. So you're saying my audience would be the, uh, people on the coast, pretty much. Yeah, you know, pretty much. Talk. Yeah, people on the coast or a select group of people, individuals, versus, mm -hmm. you know, a lot, a lot bigger swath of individuals. Because, you know, it sounds like a good idea. I mean, you know, doing open source, open shift, et cetera. But if your topic isn't, you know, it doesn't grab people, Mm -hmm. Why would I want to go there? Why would I want to sit through your presentation? Yes, yes. Understood, understood. I think another thing mm -hmm. that might help, if at least somebody like me, would be almost starting small. Um, mm -hmm. right. While it would be good to be able to track kind of everything everywhere, you don't want to exclude people. But at the same time, if you could take one, I don't know, one example, maybe you are tracking just cows and I have this cool little sensor that goes here and you can put it on a farm and you get kind of get that going and then you can look at the next thing and the next thing. Mm -hmm. But if I'm, again, if, if I'm a, from a, if I'm a presenting to a technical audience, that the way I talk is going to be very different than presenting to like an academic audience too. Like they'd be looking at it from two different angles. Like for me, I'm looking at the edge computing angle, I'm trying to think, how would you do this? Um, while other people in the audience might be asking like, why should I do this, right? Kind of looking mm -hmm. at different parts of it. And I see you're trying to bridge them together. Anyway, just a couple thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Build your, yes. And build your road. You're wrong with not building the day. <laughs> yeah, I agree, I agree. And, and those are those are um, those are some challenges because uh, the non-technical, you know, they be like, "Why would I even care?" You know. <laughs> and yes, I I, I I understand both both of your comments. So, how could I improve this? Any, any suggestions? 
like like Ben said, start small and then work your roadmap from the start small side. Um, take out the fish, take out the water, the salization. Um, go a little bit broader because, like I said, why am I here if I'm just going to talk? If you're going to talk about fish and salt water, it doesn't impact. It doesn't impact, impact. You know, myself. You have a small. You have a very small audience. Who is who is the audience? Um, uh, maybe I missed that. Well, uh, you know, um, I would think anyone that's interested in um, the smart cities, climate resilient cities, would be my audience. Um, yeah, that, because, that's not going to work. Well, I mean, if, if you look at like, just the consumption of water, what's one of the biggest consumptions of water? Data centers. I mean, are you going to drink it? Or are you going to put it in the data center? I mean, that's a. I mean, that's a. Data centers are, take, are taking a lot of water to stay cool, you know, and um, and, and and so that's that's the whole thing with climate change. You have to just people are going to have to choose, you know, am I going to have good, clean, fresh water? And and we, and we know we're getting more and more data centers, and and so that data center has to come from somewhere. If you look at the geographical implementation of the Google data centers, they're always near some big reservoir of water. And so if you go out and you look at these data centers built, then you know that their wars is going to get taken away from human consumption. And that can affect anyone, anywhere. I mean, isn't, do y'all see that as a valid point? No, I don't believe it's a valid point because you're doing, like I said, you're doing apples and oranges here. Um, water, you know, is one thing. It's literally, you know, three three um, atoms together. Um, you can't equate drinking water with data center uh, consumption, water consumption, et cetera. It just there's a it's a very stretch. That's a stretch, you know. Because like I said, you know, I don't have you know a data center around here where I'm currently sitting, and I don't think Ben does either. But yet I have fresh water. I mean, I can, you know, I got water out of the tap this morning, you know, to, to drink my, you know, to drink my tea. So mm -hmm. understanding that, you know, putting apples, apple, or apples, apples, oranges, oranges, it, some of the stuff you're looking at is a, is a stretch. You know, climate change, you know, it's up to the individual person. I mean, you can't necessarily, you know, force somebody to accept climate change. You can't force somebody to, you know, how do I call it? use technology mm -hmm. to do either you know mm -hmm. go for climate change or against climate change that's a personal preference and a personal decision that's not something that you know technic technology can or cannot um how do i call it you know make somebody believe or just you know prove or disprove climate change that's a personal thing i mean you have 100 people in the room you know you may not have 100 people believe or disbelieve climate change you know, that's 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 a human it's a human thing. But to equate put all this stuff together and being able okay. to fundamental era, you know, form a how do you call it, a presentation or or what have you, based on all this and you know, all this stuff that you've presented. It so you don't see uh flow. Huh? It doesn't flow. I mean, you, no... you don't see the, the government's response to climate change as being a valid concern, and what it's did... not. It's not you know, government response is one thing, but again, it's like you know politics. So you brought up politics. You know you can't you can't force somebody to do one thing and they're going to do something completely different. It's a human. It's a human human thing. So you're not necessarily saying yes or no. From a from that standpoint, so again, it's you know, I mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, I, yeah, I, I have a you know, like I said earlier, I said I have a hard time connecting the dots of everything you've presented. Okay, I wonder if maybe instead of a single um, paper or presentation, whatever the final form is if it might be easier consumed as a series you know mm -hmm. in this one i'm going to talk about just right 
tracking water, all sorts of water. Mm -hmm. And then that is, that is one thing. Cause that could be very different than, well, than anything else. Mm -hmm. Um, and it might almost be easier if you, if you are writing something, it might almost be easier to fit it all and just kind of keep it topic by topic. And again, think of who your audience is. Um, cause there can mm -hmm. be, you know, again, there can be that, you know, the academic and the discussion about the why and then the technology of the how, and it is, you know, it, might be hard to bridge them together. Yes, it is. I think it's a great challenge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you definitely have your work cut out for you for sure. And, and you <laughs> don't, don't, work, put, right? and don't put too many, you know, topics in one basket on top of that because you start putting more topics in one basket, it starts getting watered down. You start deviating from the core you know, topics you're trying to touch up and touch on. And you go down rabbit holes and all sorts of other stuff where you may or may not want to go. You're mm -hmm. driving the you're driving the you know conversation. You're driving the presentation, not the audience. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, guys, thank, thank you so much because um, because you know basically I, I was trying to, to use that type of justification to say, hey, all this data is going to be coming in from the edge. But if it comes in and you're not making any decisions on, on it, then what good is it, you know? Um, because, the, you know, the forecast is that edge computing is going to be a very transformative thing, but that the calculation has to be done closer to the source of the data. Um, so just trying to find a trigger to make that happen. <laughs> well, you know, I'll, I'll keep keep trying, you know. And I'll uh, chalk it up and, and try again. I always learn something new every day. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, your 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 presentation there. Do you have like a template that you used? Uh, no. Um, I just um. I guess do some critiques um, from talking to my customer, trying to understand what their needs were, what their challenges were, um, listening to the my customers and, and and what they had their thoughts about um, food security and the challenges of fish and and the water and just so those are what blew up from 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 um, from my interactions with, with them. Just say, hey, these are our nightmare scenarios. No. Well, the thing, the other, the other thing that you brought up just now uh, is your customers. Your customers are where Doha and Bahrain, um, and those areas. Some are in the United States, and well, we're all in the United States, but one may um, is also looking at doing something in in another part of the world, you know, fish. So he has a, and in his project, you know, he has the similar concerns, you know, and so one is a fresh. Uh, a farm fish, and the other one is a wild caught in this case. And so those those are the are the uh, use cases there. And and both of those use cases are a little different. Uh, like I said, in the, in the fish farming, you know, you have them on the pond. The fish are growing, they're eating, but they're also defecating, and then you got to clean the water without messing up the biochemistry to kill the fish and and then um, the wild cut, you're gonna need lots of amounts of water just to put fish on ice or you're gonna lose your product <laughs> very quickly, you know? So, because um, yeah, you have no market if you fish are not well preserved on ice, you know? So you need lots of clean water to do that. So, um, in different parts of the world, there's different things going on. So understanding the, the, the environments. You know, so some places are, are going bone dry where the aquifers are actually gone and there's no fresh water. And then um, unless we have a storm. So but it just it differs from place to place. You know, you know. Well, well, guys, um, no, I, I thank you for your um for your feedback, you know. Um go back and, and try again, you know.
Yeah, thanks for giving us a chance to look at it and talk about Likewise. it. Okay, yeah, thanks for that. I will, um, look at it. All right. Yeah, I will. Thank you so much. And I'll, I'll try to regroup and retry it again to be more successful for my audience. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Yep, take care. Yep, thank you. All right, bye-bye.